Hi, my name is Rich Canfield with Ultrapon, and today we're doing the instructions on using our silver tool. Our silver tool has the type of uh, piston injector that is very common in the uh, in the business, uh, mainly in the do-it-yourself market, and uh, maybe one professional. Uh, most of the professional tools have the a piston with an o-ring seal and this one gives you more vacuum and gives you more pressure and is resin efficient meaning the resin doesn't leak out that's the kind that uh, we use in our other tools the other type of injector on the market is, is this type of a of a grommet now the one drawback to the grommet seal is if you do you don't have much vacuum but also if you use too much pressure on the piston, the uh, resin comes out the top and will spill into the chamber and all over these threads. So what we do have done is, is we have added a seal onto uh, the, our grommet tool, which will give you more vacuum, give you a little more pressure, and prevent any resin from leaking out. So this is how it works. Uh, these are one of the easiest types to use on the market. That's why you will see all of the do-it-yourself kits on the market use this type of an injector uh, with a grommet seal. Uh, okay, now these you'll see uh, they come in black and clear. These uh, suction cups are made out of vinyl. Okay, and what we have here is a star break. And what we do first is we will scrape the impact point, get little pieces of glass out of there. Okay, and then brush that off. You're going to mount the uh, bridge first. You want to put a little dab of Vaseline on the suction cups to keep them on the glass then you will center the brake with the impact point dead center next you will put in the cylinder and you can look down the hole and make sure that it is on the impact point once you're on the impact point, uh, twist this cylinder so that it's snug and tight against the glass. Next step, uh, we're going to use the easier, faster resin, which is the 18, just for the sake of the video. Uh, drop four to five drops down the cylinder. And then you want to let that drip down into the grommet on your piston. This is something different uh, that we've added to these, this type of injector. So we are going to lubricate the bottom of this with pit filler or any other resin to help seal it in the chamber. And now the resin has seeped down into the grommet, and we're just going to put the piston in, and we're going to twist it. And this will go in by itself. You will feel it tighten up when the uh, when the stub of the piston is in the grommet and you'll see the resin start to go in the brake. As you can see there the resin is starting to flow. Now once the bottom of that seal is in the cylinder then you've got the cylinder sealed.
Now the problem when the, the problem that this seal solves is these type of injectors when you use too much pressure the resin comes out here it doesn't go out there it goes out into this area and this is an open cylinder so then the resin is sitting inside there and which is a waste of resin and what happens is is you take the tool off and you turn it on its side and then the resin spills so it wastes resin and uh, causes spillage especially if you go upside down with it then you get it on your hands the glass the car or whatever so this seal eliminates that problem okay now you see this break is almost filled most of the legs are filled okay and so we're going to demonstrate how this seal works you when you twist this counterclockwise you're going to feel it come out of the grommet and this is going to give you more vacuum than if you just have this in there so we're going to pull up, put a little vacuum on it. This will help release any air that could be trapped in there. Um, these type of injectors mainly fill the brake by what's called displacement. They displace it because they don't really have a lot of vacuum. Um, this one, type, these types with the uh, O-ring piston, uh, it it uh, repairs by vacuum and pressure and vacuum will create more interaction with the glass and help the resin suck in and get pushed in at the same time okay so you can pull this up and leave it on for 30 seconds or a minute and then you can go back down you'll feel it when it starts to tighten up And when you're looking to check whether you have whether the brake is filled or not, you look at the profile of each leg or crack. They, they, uh, those little cracks we call them legs. And this was a typical star brake. And right now, from the 45 degree angle of each one of these legs, it looks like it's all done. So you can increase the pressure on the resin by turning the cylinder and then this just puts it into the pressure mode again I'm going to check it again yep Yep, and each one of those legs are, are filled. So now we're going to release some of the flex on the glass by, by uh, releasing this one turn. And what that does is, is this is pushing down and flexing the brake open. And when you cure, when you release this just a hair, it will close up the legs and cracks and it will push the resin forward to the very perimeter of the bullseye and the tips of the crack and then it's time to cure now there are three ways to cure sunlight is good another way is fluorescent these have all have high lab tests with a fluorescent light and as with sunlight, what you want is to have uniform UV energy. So when you're on a windshield, you can throw these over the cylinder. And you want to have two of them. And two of them will make sure you're hitting the entire brake uh, simultaneously. And with two of them, you're getting uniform UV energy. 
and the uniform UV energy is going to give you a uh, consistent high quality high strength repair if the UV light is not uniform uh, meaning it's got high intensity on one bulb and low intensity on other bulb it's going to mess up your your cured resin so that's the second way that we cure is with fluorescent fluorescents uh, are, are known for giving off uniform UV energy now the latest things on the market have been LED lights and those are the ones you have to be careful with with an LED light multiple bulbs especially if they're spread further apart will all give off different amounts of UV energy and that can cause a disruption in your structure especially if you don't cure under pressure now we cure under pressure because it holds everything in place and it puts more resin in the break uh, it also will compensate for any shrinkage so you'll end up with a stronger repair not curing under pressure will normally reduce the strength by 10 to 15 points uh, of new glass strength when you do a, a strength test on windshield repair per the roll legs, uh, you test it and compare it to new laminated glass. So when you do the test, the score of the new laminated glass is 100. So like I said, if you if this was, uh, let's say this one scores uh, 90, cured under pressure, if you did not cure it under pressure, it might score about 80 or 75. So that's why it's a good practice to cure under pressure. Now the newest light that we have on the market is a single LED bulb and this is a first in that this light cures from the inside of the vehicle because it goes through the PVB which is very rare. So what we're going to do you want to wear UV protective glasses with this light and I'm going to demonstrate right here. We have a UV, uh, a universal UV light holder, which will be attached to this when you get it. And then you place this on the inside of the windshield. And it's best to cure two to four minutes. Reason being with two to four minutes is um, various uh, PVBs will allow a certain amount of UV energy through and some of them allow more UV energy at 365 nanometers than other. Uh, so two to four minutes is going to make sure whatever PVB uh, is in that windshield that it's going to penetrate it. Like this glass for example it penetrates uh, at about a 3.0 whereas in a car it might go down to on some of them it might go down to 0.5 and 0.5 is about is where our our fluorescents are and these cure in two minutes so again you can put this on for two to four minutes under pressure and don't look at the light wear protective eyeglasses and we're not going to hold this on for uh, two to four minutes just for the sake of the repair time of the video but this is uh, just demonstrating it and so we're going to pull it off now and now what you do is time to fill the pit so you're going to remove the tool now you don't want resin to spill all over the place so what you're going to do is release the pressure on the glass and pull this piston a bit and again, this seal here is going to prevent resin from being spilt out into the cylinder. Okay, now we're going to pit fill. Now the resin that was sitting on this, on this break and the impact point, uh, interacting with the glass, you don't want to wipe it out. So you want to take a razor blade and just remove the resin and keep the resin in there flush to the glass yeah, wipe off your vaseline there and then you're going to put a drop of pit filler on here
If you then put the Mylar tab over there and roll it on so you don't get a bubble. And with this light, I'm going to pull it back over here. And then you can cure it from the outside for 30 seconds would be the fastest. Uh, I, I usually like to do overkill myself, so I will leave it on for a minute. Okay, now as you see, um, all the leftover resin in here hasn't spilt out. Or with all the other tools that use this uh, grommet seal, if you place the tool like that, all of the resin that was left in there is in here and it would come out and spill, creating a mess. So that's why we have eliminated that problem with the seal on there. And again, um, these are the easiest type of, uh, of repair tools be, uh, because they don't really mess with the vacuum or anything. Uh, but these are the most effective and have the most control. They have more vacuum, they have more pressure, and they're resin efficient. Uh, that, that's what we have in our Crackmaster Wonder Bar tool. This is a quick turn injector, and it has that type of a piston. Okay, the pit is done here. So we're gonna turn that light off. And we're going to scrape the pit. Now, the idea of what we wanna do here is to keep the pit clear. And there's two ways to do that. Take spray away glass cleaner and keep it wet while you are scraping it. And a lot of times that will keep it clear enough that you don't see the, the uh, pit very much. And then the other way, which you can do either this way or in addition to what you just did, is put a drop of our pit polish on there and then use a wine cork and polish it. Okay, and that is how you do a repair with our silver tool. Thank you for watching. Again, this is Rich Campfield from Ultrabond.